What's the tempo? Uh, it's slow too. Okay. Like about one, two, three. <laughs> Sound and dial. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? All right. <laughs> hey, what's up? Look at you. So awesome. <laughs> how are you? Probably, probably C7, maybe. It's like a C7. Yeah. And sometimes I've heard the dominant seventh in here. Uh -huh. You know, just, just. I don't want to touch your piano. It's not mine. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, wide, wide world. Just me. G7th. Well, you got to get back to F, right? Right. So then I, you know, put the quick turnaround in the, the G minor C7. Though I had a G diminished, yeah. you know what I mean? But G7th is, is good. Too. Wide, wide world. Just leave for me. Let's do this. Uh, where's my pen? Oh, no, no. Oh, that's in half meter. Are, are you counting in half yeah, meter yeah. too? One, two, three. I almost had a feeling on this phrase, it would be like a house of cards falling down. Where you can actually rush on, but you know, da do di do da, do di do da, do di do da, do di do da. Where's the double time start? Okay. Da 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 do di do da da da. This is the halftime. Do da da. You don't know how a lost heart feels. Da 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 do da da da. Lots of reminiscing. Ba ba da ba ba da ba da da. Lips that taste of tears. Da 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 da. Wham! Wham! Shit. Yeah. <laughs> he used to play this with me. I did? We played this 25 years ago. Did you copy? No. I got a copy for you too. One, two, three. <laughs> Not so much ding, 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 more of a Brazilian feeling. Okay, okay, okay. You know how I lost part. It's a ballad there. Yeah, it's a ballad. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's almost like a Megacy kind of feeling. You know, like a, like a dude with Johnny Hodges, like, you know. 
By, the song is called By Myself. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, did you say you were doing this song alone? The song is called By Myself. Oh! We used to play with Art Farmer, and he had this Gil Evans change that he would play on, and I'm still debating whether to do this on the blowing, because it sure doesn't... I think Helen Merrill actually sang it this way, too, because he would go like...
need to know what it, what it is, though. What I'm thinking is a little bit something like this, you know. But, uh, you know, so do I believe my heart or you. I'm just trying to contrast it with the, I don't want to be mm. this Chess Chum and this three two. I gotta think about the tempo and yeah. everything tonight and stuff. But. <laughs> then I'll take the, you take the B flat seventh, mm -hmm. I'll take the A major seventh, and then we'll hit a note on that. Okay. So let's just try the last, uh, Basically, uh, four bars for the B major. Three, four, five. That's an ending. I had an alternative ending, that, but maybe a little too dramatic. Mm -hmm. okay. But tell me if you think it is. You can, I'm, I'm easy to criticize. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the thing I was thinking also was the famous, another Dizzy Gillespie ending, I think, that I've heard. What's that? He, he likes to go, he was, he was like, I said, my friend, you know. <laughs> you know, it was like a crescendo, you know. I, so just try the end, I'll show you what I mean. If you play this, the uh, concert A flat to a G. Oh, it's like a sports sound though. You know, that kind of, uh, let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, yeah, you know. You know, it might work, I mean, you know. So again, from the same place. Three, four, farewell. You're about to go in. What do you what do you have to say for yourself? Um, I don't like to say. The music will say. The music will speak for itself. Excellent. We're well, hoping. No, well, I just have to feel it. Yeah. You know, okay. feel. I don't want to be too strict. But I think we should have some kind of intro. You know, not quite that. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm hearing like maybe like a descending thing, like uh, F one. I'm sorry. 
A flat minor, D flat, G flat minor, C flat, E minor, A7, C minor, F, B flat. E minor? F? Yeah, we had that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, okay like, say it again. Like, uh, I know Kenny might come up with something better, but for the moment, we've got uh, A flat to D flat, G flat to C flat, E minor to A seventh, and then to C minor F seven. Into the B flat, into the top. <laughs> yeah, at least you won't be flat. Was it nothing worse than flat out? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the water. You're welcome. Oh, there you are. <laughs> My name is Chris. Chris, nice to meet you. I'm Boston Mitch. The format for this tune. Um, Play the intro. I'll play a chorus of the melody on the saxophone. I'll do a vocal chorus. Then Kenny will play a, a chorus. Then I'll play a chorus. And uh, BC will play a half a chorus. And then I'll come in. My heart tells me I will cry again. Second half. Second half, yeah.
I'll play solos and blow, you know. But I'm thinking that we'll play the head, then uh, give Mr. Cranshaw the first solo, mm -hmm. and I would kind of come in sparsely with him on the bridge and the last eight, and then uh, I'll play a chorus, and you know, kind of just maybe into the next chorus with with Bob, and then you come in on the bridge of that chorus with me and mm -hmm. play a little counterpoint with me. Then you pick it up and you start playing, and Josh will come in on. On the, on the bridge with you mm. and play a little counterpoint with you and then uh, maybe continue through uh, a chorus of Josh where we all kind of play on the bridge and kind of let that you know go there mm. and then go to the bridge again rather than playing the whole head just taking it out on so in other words uh, there's four choruses. There's the melody chorus, there's the bass chorus where he's joined by me. Mm -hmm. There's my chorus where I'm joined by Kenny. There's actually five chorus. Mm -hmm. There's Kenny's chorus where he's joined by Josh. There's Josh's chorus where at the bridge you're kind of joined by everybody. And then instead of playing the A sections of the head, because I try to get everything on the record with time and everything, we go right back to the bridge. And the bridge is really tiptoeing, you know, I mean, I, I really thought that's like, it's like, you know, Chev is so light sometimes, you know, that's like, uh. you know, yeah. 
just improvising that part. Don't, don't worry about what I wrote. I wanted the CD last night more than anything was for time <laughs> so I could listen to each thing and understand how long the songs were you may want to try to do or do, do you think you'll need another day to come no I think we're cool you know but I need mixing and stuff but the band is through a band didn't enough you wanted one life song so like the underdog in the last record was like a life song and another life song is fair weather it's and not what, about love and we wanted to have a duel 
and we wanted to do it. Eric Keen, actually, this was Eric Keen's suggestion. His request. Because, yeah, well, he wanted to have a duo because he really liked Deep in the Dream on mm. the last record, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, they and, sound great you know, together. And a lot of people like it. Kenny and I actually had a duet on You and I by Stevie Wonder. I remember that. On one record years ago. And those did. duos, they're extraordinary. Yeah, and Kenny and I like to play duos. And Kenny's one of the best duets, duet players in the world. In fact, his record of duets with Stan Getz is called People Time, and that's considered one of the best records ever made. I'd like to do that at some point, you know, but uh, you know what they told me once? Duet records don't sell. Labels don't, people don't want to hear whole duet records. I mean, I don't know why, but I've done, I have duet records, actually, one with Walter Davis and one with Tony Castellano, so I've made two, but they've never come out. But that's another story. Well, we're discussing yeah. here. Okay. We're discussing okay. here a solo. But anyway, solo saxophone solo. is another thing. Okay. But I think that, like, um, that basically back to Gone with the Wind, is uh, the idea was like my heart tells me is kind of like a song where you're kind of beginning of love. Is this real or, is, or do you mean what you're saying and this kind of thing? Then, you know, we have a song I hadn't anyone till you, which is like acceptance of the love. The love has arrived and it's this kind of feeling. Then we wanted some kind of song that was sort of indicative of the breakup of love. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and so I chose by myself. So uh, I'll go my way by myself. The original thought was the original, original thought. So then I thought that Gone with the Wind was kind of like more in that progression. I you love know? the idea of longing, ecstasy, and loss. That's the idea. Longing, love. ecstasy, and loss. It's such a beautiful concept. That's a very well, well, well put, my brother. Rakeen, yeah. let me ask you, man. What what drew you to Bobby? What what uh, what did you hear? Why did you decide to produce him? His, uh, his extreme feeling of um, beauty and ability, ability to really get in touch with uh, the beauty which is not uh, easily found in the world. Thank you. Thank and you. I've, uh, I felt after we made the first record that it was, uh, it was all, um, it was such a great job. It was all worth it to uh, to be able to make uh, to make it happen. To get in touch with some with some real um, pure. You told me you were searching for something real. I thought that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. The way he put it to me originally. That's kind of how you put it was. Absolutely. You know, That's beautiful. You know, so uh, if I can be his connection to. What's real? He could be my connection to what's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make a good team. Make a good team I could say that it's also uh, for me. It's a, a kind of a, in a way, philanthropic project. Even yeah, though it's, well, uh, I mean, it's, it's also yeah. it's also very important. From uh, we hope that this is actually going to be able to make a great uh, success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, but I think the, in the long the run. Time, also, I think hopefully with the originals on it. You know, if, uh, if if one of these originals end up, ends up in a movie or something, we'll actually make back what we uh, put into the record, you know? <laughs> but I think we're also uh, putting a great uh, print in the history of jazz. Absolutely. And um, in the history of music, we're producing beautiful art. When Eric Keen heard me in Toronto one night, that's how we met. I was playing at an Israeli restaurant called Mazetta with a very fine guitarist, Reggie Schwager, who was on our last record. And Eric Keen was there, and he really hadn't heard much jazz, he'd heard, or the, even the saxophone. He'd heard Kenny G, and he knew that wasn't it. <laughs> you know, Eric Keen said, you know, I've heard Kenny G, and like, I didn't know a saxophone. Now I hear what a saxophone should sound like, you know, that I heard you. That's a saxophone, you know. Yeah. And I turned him on to Sonny Rollins and Charlie Parker and to know those, my influences, you know, the people that, that, that I wouldn't be me without having heard them, you know. It seems on the same night. On the same night, man. And make something and out of it, right? It's all good, you know. You know? And it's all good, you know, and that's what I mean. I remember hearing, you know, like Archie Shep yeah. and uh, Al Cohen on the same evening, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, something like that, Moody, you know. Man, man, I, I used to, I remember one, one night in the afternoon I played a duo concert with Julius Hemphill, Tony Von Gard, and then played bebop with Dexter that night. Then the next day, funk with David Sanborn. You, you, and so, yeah, so yeah. like, I like, I like it all, you, you know. And, and and when it all fuses into you, then you have like many avenues you can go down, and, and, and all the different avenues you can see, you know. Yeah. And, and I, 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 I see that deepness in you, man. You, 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 you've traveled many places in yeah, your mind. Yeah, I see that you. We always have that affinity. <laughs> right, We've right, always yeah. had that from the first time we hit. We always had yeah, that kind man, of. Yeah, I knew man. you were all, all. Yeah. You know, you've been everywhere too. Yeah, you know, man, so we yeah, had that. Yeah, this man has been many places <laughs> yeah, in his, in his mind. <laughs>
<laughs> Not to just mention on uh, the planet. Not only that, in his, <laughs> in his body and other people's Yeah, body. right, in other people's <laughs> bodies. <laughs> Many different places. <laughs> Many different places, yes. <laughs> you know, like one night you did a story. This bass player, Billy Fry, who's no longer a bass player, but right. he had taken something like some Belladonna or some kind right. of outrageous right. hallucinogen. Right. And right. he's playing with Ira Sullivan. I'm on the bandstand with Ira. And Ira, and Billy is like out in space. He's like, and Ira's trying to play You Stepped Out of a Dream, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He goes, Billy, Billy, where's the time? Where's the time? Billy goes, Ira, the time is in all places. <laughs> <laughs> Movers of shit. <laughs> Josh <laughs> speaks. <laughs> How'd you feel, man, about this? I felt good. This was fun. It was, it was, it was um, pain free. Pain free. Mm -hmm. Pain free. Cool, man. How did you meet Bobby? I met Bob in um, Washington Square Park. I was just playing with a band, and uh, he came by. Actually, we were playing Cherokee. We came by. He came by, and um. He talked for a while, then about uh, five, six months later, he just called me up and asked me if I wanted to do the recording. <laughs> you must have been impressed. Yeah. So what was your first impression of him? Did about, you hear of him before? Oh yeah, yeah. Since, um, I remember hearing about him in, when I was in high school. <clears throat> there was a saxophone player teacher at my school that was talking about him. I told me I should check him out. You're from Hartford? I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, yeah. And I hear tell you studied with uh, Jackie McLean since you were 10 years old, is that correct? Well, I met, I met Jackie when I was 10. You met him when you were 10? I started studying with him when I was about 14, 15. Were you playing trumpet when you were 10 years old? I, I was. I would, like, I had no, uh, I wasn't even listening to jazz. I was just kind of playing the trumpet in, in school band and such. Any last thoughts you want to pass on? Um, Bob Moore's a shit. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. And this is a star band <laughs> to get on the road. <laughs> Upstairs <laughs> without no hairs. <laughs> Same thing. We're gonna do it there, done. These gentlemen. Yes, I don't think on there. What are we? Yeah. Here we are. So, how are you guys feeling about this date? Ah, it's great. great. Yeah. Everybody had fun. We had yeah. fun. Did we learned some things. Yeah. I learned a couple of tunes. We learned really? some songs too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bob ta taught us a couple of songs. I learned about life just looking at uh, the way you guys play. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank what do you think is special about playing with Bob, you guys? His uh, complete knowledge of music. It is a good, a complete understanding of melody, harmony, and rhythm, and makes makes it easy for rhythm section guys. Don't you think? I think so. I think, I think that could be said of everyone in this band. Well, yeah. you know. I mean, you know, for instance, this bass player and drummer, it's rare to find bass players and drummers that know all the lyrics. <laughs> you know, so when you're singing, yeah, yeah. I mean, because of their vast experience with singers, you know, I mean, God knows who, who Bob Cranshaw hasn't played with, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, Peggy Lee, Frank Sinatra, all these yeah. people. And, you know, of course, Steve with his Shirley Horn extensive experience. But just that they love lyrics, too. So if you're going to sing, these would be the cats to get, you know. <laughs> I mean, even just then, if you're gonna play too, you know, because they just right. do it. Yeah, it did seem that there was just an unspoken kind of communication between you that kind of just worked. And even though you didn't get a lot of rehearsal in, man, the tapes. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of rehearsal, but it was a lot of music. <laughs> no, we hadn't played any of them today, you know. Right. Yeah, we didn't rehearse those songs today. I just brought these songs in today. Right, right. Yeah, these don't, guys, don't you ever do that again? <laughs> <laughs> never, never. Don't ever do that again. Never, never, never. <laughs> So maybe uh, maybe this will be a band that, that hits the road, man. Would be great. Yeah, Akeem yeah. actually said that we should do that. We're ready. We're ready. Just We're ready. ready to hear that. I'm Let's ready. do it. <laughs> that would be my dream. Let's do it. But so my coat, my bag is packed. No take, kidding. And it take. I I think it's uh, probably the best thing I've ever done. You know, like I said, you can't get a better band in the world. And. Uh, it was like last time, I think last time we've done a beautiful job. We've mm -hmm. created something really beautiful. But this time, it was yeah, that exceeded it's... expectations. Mm -hmm. Oh, Erkin, trust me, you know, I mean, musically. You know, Erkin has good instincts, even musically. I mean, you know, that there was, uh, even on By Myself, for instance, the ending was too long. And when I listened back to it, it was true. Erkin mentioned, you know, can we just cut to the chase? And, you know, instead of having the big tag going right to it, I found a way to cut, and it cut beautifully. It went right mm -hmm. there, you know. I'm anxious to hear it and choose choose the takes and, uh, and the, the timing of, of uh, the um, the timing of, of the recording sessions is uh, is quite symbolic. It's sort of right at the turn of the year, right? exactly after Christmas. It's this kind of magical time. It's a nice thing, yeah, to have that uh, new beginnings, new year. I usually make two or three or sometimes four assembly, and I start to listen to. If I like a certain order, you know, like you want to start with something slow or start with something fast and grab people, you know what I mean? Like, like it depends. And, and Bob Mover, he's, uh, he's the guilty one. You are guilty for making such a, for creating a real beauty. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think so. Let's try the ending of that one so we get an ending on that. Okay? So let's take the whole uh, after Bob solo. Let's just do that to the end. Uh, if I'm... Ooh. 